while AI has made significant strides in recent years, it is still not perfect and there are certainly areas in which it falls short. Despite its limitations, AI remains a valuable tool for many businesses and organizations and its capabilities will only continue to expand as technology advances. However, it is impossible to recognize the progress that has been made and the potential for further advancements in the future. Hey, so that whole intro was written by AI. For organizing all my notes and ideas, I use Notion. I can use it on my phone and computer, I'm not sponsored. And recently they added this AI text feature. So all I typed out was AI isn't good. And then I just let it write about that. So that's where I got the words for the intro. Kind of freaky, but kind of cool. I haven't really experimented with all the AI programs out there because honestly, I was kind of avoiding them. I wasn't sure how to feel about, you know, people just typing in stuff and making art. But after reading up on it and discussing it with some friends, it's not going anywhere. It's only gonna get bigger, it's only gonna get better, it's only gonna get more popular. I can't ever see myself wanting to make straight up AI art, but the possibility of using AI to make my art better definitely intrigues me. And so just at the right time, Photoshop came out with some new AI features. So let's check it out. The setup is pretty much the same. There's gonna be a few extra tools that you might notice or settings, but for the most part, it's the same as the regular Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this to four by five. Make it Instagram ready. So this is gonna be what we're gonna work with. So remember, this is just to show off some, some of the Photoshop AI features with the generative fill. It's not gonna be so much about editing the photo. So one of the first things you, you'll notice is going to be this bar. Whatever you select, it's going to follow, it's going to be like under the selection. So it's just gonna follow what you select. It can get kind of annoying. And so one trick around that, is just you can pin it. So you can move it and then pin it where you want it. So it's gonna stay there and no matter like where you circle, it's gonna be just up there. And I mean, you can still move it. And it's not like a huge thing, but I mean, once you're selecting a lot of different things, it can get, it can get kind of annoying with it jumping around all over the place. So this is gonna be divided into three parts of ways that I could see myself using this feature. And so just jumping right in with the first part, it's going to be adding objects or stuff to your image. The lasso tool is gonna to be like your best friend, I would say. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Uh, Command J or on a Mac or Control J if you're on a PC. I do use a Mac all the time and so I apologize for certain commands that might be a little bit different. So what we're gonna do is select, like just kind of select an area. Uh, I'm not even, you know, like drawing anything. It's just kind of like a circle, right? Like there's no design to it. So what we're gonna do is uh, go here, generative fill. It says describe what you'd like to generate or feel free to leave this blank, English only. We will leave it blank in the future, but for now, I wanna show how you can add objects. So just gonna be completely random and do fire truck. Click generate and let's see what it comes up with. I'm not sure if it's faster on, I mean, my computer is pretty good, so I'm not sure if it's actually faster on the even better computer or if it's slower on a slower computer, but I mean, it's pretty quick. So that's real time. Okay, so fire truck. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I just kind of put it there, right? And remember, I didn't, my outline wasn't like a box. It wasn't the shape of a fire truck. It was just that random ugly circle. So what it's doing is like in that space, it's placing the object you want. And so I think I've seen some examples where it kind of like fills it and you know, it might not be what you're looking for. But for the most part, like if it's something, like if it's a good object and it fits in there, it's gonna, it's gonna be placed like this. Just real quick, looking at this one, we can see, like look at the backlighting in, through the window. It kind of matches like this stuff. I guess I can zoom in. And look at this side lighting. It matches on Bumblebee over here. Mm, what I like the color temperature is like pretty solid too. 
uh, my, maybe a little too white, like could be a little more like a, a tinge more yellow. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty good. And you can see how it, it put it in the surrounding area, not just um, like it's not a circle fire truck or whatever um, I had created or whatever shape you create. It's just in that space, it's going to make it fit and blend. So every time that you do this, it's going to give you three options. So you can see here there's three options and then there's also here the different pictures. So let's go ahead and cycle through and see the other options. Okay, that one's pretty cool. I like that it's in like a, a whole kind of divot area. And then look at the tires. Like, look at that. Like it, it's, it has like some rocks and dirt over the tires. Uh, I mean, fire truck was kind of a random example, but it kind of, it's kind of cool, you know, with Bumblebee. Might be a little too small for as like his size, like it could be a little bigger. They're not Gundam size, right? The lighting might be a little off, a little, like kind of, like it's not perfect. Let's see, let's see the third one. So like it even added this like grass piece right here to kind of go with this. And so what I've seen too is like it does use your image as well. So it's, I mean, obviously like it's seeing in the image, like what needs to be added. So like here, it's adding this little grass piece, right? That's not a part of the truck, that's just there. One thing I've seen, or like you might think is like, oh, it's like if I, like with my comment earlier, like it's too small, we'll just make it bigger. Well, remember I didn't, like the subject isn't just the truck. You can see over here in the mask section that it's actually, you know, that circle still. So let's just try to like command T, control T, and like make it bigger. You see like that's the whole area we selected. All right, so you can't, it's not as simple as just doing that, but let me undo that. But there are ways around it. Like you can select just the truck as the subject, like re or refine the mask and then just make it smoother and then you're able to, to adapt it better. But I'm not gonna go too into detail with that. Right now I just wanna kinda show how I would use it and some different like tricks and effects that, that you might be able to easily do in your photos as well. Okay, so I think I like that one the best. I also like the, the color. I mean, this isn't gonna be in the final image and I didn't, I didn't do, do that in the final image, but I just wanted to show you that. And another thing just to, to show is like, see, it's not just adding the truck. It is also affecting the area around the truck. So that way it blends in better. That's why when you're making your your object, it's not like you wanna, oh, here, let me make the, that's a really ugly truck, but let me make the outline of a truck and then put it in there. No, I mean, for certain things, maybe you could, or the subjects or whatever, or like if you wanna like do something with your subject itself, but like I think it's better to be, to do like a general area and then give it some space to work with to put it there. It doesn't give you the option to like thumbs up. It's still the in the beta. And so it's like, I do like the result. I think it did a good job. So, you know, sending it some feedback. It's not like 100% in, in focus, which kind of works because like it's in the, not in the foreground completely, but it's a little in front of Bumblebee. And so it is kind of out of focus. So it's pretty good. So what are some other things you can add? So some more practical things that might work. I'm gonna try to like alter the background a little bit. So let's get like a big, big shape. And so one thing with this too is, I think it's just like a 10, 24 pixel width that it gives maximum quality. So if it's bigger than that, it does kind of like blur it a little bit. If, it, if you're doing certain things, you know, it might be better to do it in pieces instead of just like a big chunk like I'm doing. Let's do some dusty mountains, All right? Let's see, like that could be a cool, that could be an epic background. Hmm, okay, that's not a dusty mountain. Hmm, okay, so there we go. So you can see like, I'm not sure what that is. Like, I feel like it's someone else's toy photo that it found or something, I don't know. We're gonna put those down. We'll give this one a thumbs up, that's kind of cool. You can see how it fits in, in the lighting. Okay, the lighting works. But remember, it's a huge section too, so look at all this that it added. Okay, that looks, it, blend, it blends really well. That's the biggest thing too, is gonna be the blending. Cause I mean, it's easy, even thinking of, you know, adding random objects, it's easy to throw stuff in there, 
but what takes time is adding it to make it look real. And so I think this does a really good job of making it look like it was there. The blending is really good. So, I mean, it's kind of a weird shape, right? But I guess it works. So you can see it's not perfect, right? When it comes to adding certain things. So let's get, let's try something else like a um, broken building rubble. I forgot what I had typed when I first did the image because I did add a section here and, uh, but it was something more subtle. Okay, maybe it looks like, kind of like a car door or something. Okay, looks, looks okay. Okay, I like that. And I, I, so I feel like I could see myself using it for, for stuff like this to make it a little more real. So adding objects definitely has potential. Now let's move on to part two, completing areas with the generative fill. I'm gonna use this marquee tool instead of the lasso. So what happened was I had the blackboard on this photo that I used to cover like my, my front yard and then it kind of helps show the light and the sand better, but it didn't cover all of the image. So you can see like this little rectangle right here, it left there. So what I'm gonna do is just like select it like that. And then let's go to generative fill. And so here, we're not gonna type anything. We're just gonna leave it blank. So this is gonna be similar to the other, like the content aware fill. From my little experience I've seen is it's way better. It's way better at, at just making it and blending it. So leaving it blank and let's just click generate and let's see what happens. Here you can see it pretty well. Once again, without, with, without, with. Let's see what other options it did. Okay, so here it kind of continued that rock area. And this just kind of took it off and really continued that like blast. Um, I kind of like this. I guess I like this because the rock's not as straight. Like look at the, the details of this and how it continued like the darker spots. That's pretty cool. And that was easy, right? For experiment purposes, let's make it a crazy shape. And we'll go all over this. So it's a little bit bigger and I'm doing it on the same layer as the, the piece we just did. That's one, two. Okay, so see it kind of took some of that green from our image and put it there. It kind of worked, like kind of be like a tree, I guess. I don't know. Oh, that took way too much green. Okay, that one. I kind of like it. Like it's not the best, but you know, it works. So now moving on to part three, which is the most popular I've seen people use, is using generative fill to make your image bigger. So what we're gonna do is, if I go to crop and I do something like this, I'm going to highlight our image. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I mean, I think the closer the better. I think it, okay, I got it. And then with this, we're gonna click this one and what it's gonna do is invert the selection because I wanna select the border, not the actual picture. So now let's go to generative fill and just generate. And so what it should do is it's gonna expand all of the edges of the photo and it's gonna make it a bigger looking scene. Once again, it's not perfect and you can see some flaws. And so here, if I was actually doing it, you know, I might wanna do separate pieces just to make sure it's like the best quality of image. Uh, let's just cycle through. And so you can see like, you know, I'm still kind of experimenting with different techniques and the lines and all that. So here, uh, when, I, when I've when tried this on another image, I kind of like, it was easy to, to erase these and go back once I had everything set. Like it can be better sometimes to select more inside the image, you know, so it has like some buffer or even like feathering it. Uh, there's different options to, to blend that better from the start. But I just want to give a quick example to show. Where I've seen this also useful is with like landscape shots. For experiment purposes, let's say our image was You know, we can see if this is gonna look cooler or something. Okay, so let's say this was our image, right? 
But here, I'm going to crop it again. And we're going to make it four by five. So we're going to make it bigger, right? Did y'all see what I did there? So I made the image landscape oriented. And then now we're going to add to it to make it a, a portrait. So what we're going to do is okay, select that and then hold shift and then select this. I'm going to overlap a little bit and let's see. I haven't really experimented with feathering. Let's see, feather it. Let's say, I don't know, four pixels. And so I have it over the image. So let's see if it blends it better. And we're leaving it blank. We're just experimenting. Okay, that looks kind of cool. It might even look better than the original. I don't know. You, you saw the potential, right? You can change your landscape images and make them portraits. So for the final image like this, like I did add this right here. I forgot, forgot what I typed in. It might've been like broken building or something. And then I did mess around with this area over here. Like I think it was just a blank fill to, and it kind of added some extra smoke to cover the dark, the empty spots. And then like I did in the example, I covered this, cor this corner over here where the board ended. And so then, yeah, obviously some color editing, his visor editing or visor effects. But that was the final image that we got. I really love the potential that we have with this Photoshop AI. And it's not like other AI programs where it's making art for you just by typing in something. It, it's a way of making your art better. It's a way of improving your art. So let me know what you think. Let me know if, you, if you've tried it out or any other tips and tricks that you like about it to create and inspire. Peace.